and she deserves a big, big, warm reception. I said, are you ready for your next performer? Yeah! Yeah! I don't know what he just said, <laughs> but that's fine. My name is Irene, I'm from Argentina. Um, I lived 11 years in Ireland, by the way. Where's the Irish people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Very cool place, yeah. It's the only country I know uh, where the summer is not a season. It's just a look. <laughs> right? One day. One day. And then it's just a look. You know, it's like fucking five degrees outside. <laughs> You need to go shopping for your second winter coat <laughs> that year, you know, because the last one got destroyed the day before when you went out and you got struck by lightning <laughs> again. So you go to the store, right? And all you can find are bikinis yeah. and beach wraps and straw hats, you know? So you do as the Irish do and you buy your bikini and you head down to the beach. Or the pub. Or the pub. <laughs> or the pub wearing your bikini, why not? You head down to the beach, and uh, you put on your bikini, on top of the wetsuit. <laughs> That's how the seals know you're not one of them. <laughs> they don't try to mate with you. <laughs> you know? Unless, unless, you run into a seal that has some sort of uh, weird human fetish. You know? Like a, a seal that's into other seals that dress up as humans. <laughs> and you're there wearing your wetsuit and your bikini and you see it approaching with lusty eyes. And you're like, hey, 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 no, 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 I'm not a seal, I'm not a seal. And the seal goes like, I know you're not a seal. You're too skinny to be a seal. And when you hear the word skinny, that's it, your panties drop. <laughs> because that's all it takes when you have low self-esteem like me, you know, a compliment at the right time, and I go to bed with a fucking lock left this monster. I don't fucking care. <laughs> the good thing about the, the Irish summers is that the, the days are really long. You have like, what, 20 hours of daylight? So you can spend every day 20 hours lying on the beach, wearing a wetsuit, <laughs> looking at the rain. <laughs> but it's great. I love it. No, I do, I do, I do. It's my second home. But I'm here now. Um, I am uh, 40 years old. And uh, I, know, I know I look a bit younger, uh, which is great because, you know, thanks to that, I can still hook up with men my own age. I'm on Tinder. I'm on Tinder. It's hard being 40 and being on Tinder because there's something I've noticed about men my age on Tinder, judging by their profile pictures, okay? Is that men my age on Tinder are not into sex, they're into triathlons. <laughs> I guess just to prove themselves they still can do them, you know, and then to take pictures that they they post to their Tinder profiles to attract women they're too tired to fuck. <laughs> it's like, what is the story? You can keep running for 42 kilometers, but you can't keep your dick up for 30 seconds. What the fuck? What is it? You know, am I meant to feel attracted to a, a middle-aged man wearing a swimming cap and a Lycra onesie? What are you doing? Are you appealing to my reproduction instinct by dressing up as a human sperm cell? <laughs> Like my, you know, my reproduction instinct is like, oh yeah, look at him. He can cover long distances on land and water. He would be a good provider, a good hunter gatherer, gathering for energy bars, <laughs> hunting for sponsors, sponsored by Viagra. <laughs> but you know, every every now and then the algorithms align. <laughs> and you meet somebody on Tinder that you like, 
I, uh, I met this guy recently. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to tell you guys, I'm going through a creative crisis at the moment. I, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what to write about because I'm getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck comedy. <laughs> This guy, um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about him a little bit, okay? This guy is, uh, I want you to picture like a cross between Jesus and Tarzan. Yeah, right? Hot. Hot. Because like he has a social conscience, but also he does CrossFit. Which is great. And I am at that stage um, in a relationship that I always go through when I just meet a guy that I really like and I completely lose my identity. Completely. Like, I've been listening to rap. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I don't like rap. I've been listening to rap for the past week. And I'm, I, I want to be with him all the time and I follow him everywhere. I'm like an apostle. <laughs> <laughs> or cheetah the chimpanzee, <laughs> depending on how horny I am. If I'm super horny, I become Judah, like give me a kiss. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's covered in tattoos, these really absurd tattoos, I don't know what they mean. There's only one that I kind of recognize and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, and you have the um, A for anarchy tattooed on your chest. And he said, no, this is the A for Avengers. <laughs> and you know what? I take it, okay? I take it because, listen, superheroes, just like anarchists, they have a social conscience, and they like destroying things, right? So I take it. And man, does this guy have a social conscience? Like the other day, he was giving me oral sex. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I say like this to sound elegant, but I can't save you the, the visuals, okay? And when he finished, he looks at me and he was smiling, right? But he was a, a weird smile. It was a weird smile, like, more like the Joker. And not because I was on my period, okay? It turns out he had dislocated his jaw. <laughs> The guy gave it all, okay? <laughs> I, I can never complain again that guys don't make an effort. Okay? If that is not social conscience, I don't know what social conscience is. You know? Like the man, he, he perceived a need in the community, <laughs> and he provided a solution. You know? The problem is that a man with a social conscience, by definition, he cares not about the needs of one individual of the community. Aww. Yeah, what I'm saying is that we are in an open relationship. So I'm keeping this relationship under wraps for now. You know, I don't want to announce it to the world just yet. I think I'm gonna wait for the first trimester to be over, like in, like in pregnancies, because there's still a high risk of abortion, you know? High risk. So for the moment, I'm just focusing on, on, on giving this little embryo boyfriend all the nutrients it needs, and like zero stress, you know? But like considering it's an open relationship, it's gonna be hard, because we're talking at least triplets, right? Speaking of abortion. <laughs> I'm from Argentina, I don't know if I said this, and I don't know if you knew this, but Argentina legalized abortion uh, eight months ago. Woo! 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 Yeah, finally, finally. Up until uh, eight months ago, if you were facing an unwanted pregnancy, your only resource was uh, illegal abortions. And with illegal abortions, there's no guarantees, okay? It can go well, but it can go horribly wrong. It's like cutting your own bangs. <laughs> <laughs> Better leave it to the professionals, you know? Imagine if it was illegal for hairdressers to cut your bangs. You know, and you went to the hairdresser because you're like, yeah, my bangs are too long, and he'd be like, did somebody force you to leave it that long? 
And you're like, no. He's like, well, you should have been more careful. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but my boyfriend said he was going to be fine. <laughs> he said he was going to let me know before they got too long. Turns out he didn't. <laughs> now I'm stuck with long bangs for my whole life, right? And like, guys, let's be serious. You know, I think we can all agree that no woman wants to ever find herself in a situation of needing an abortion, mm -mm. right? Yeah. Especially if it's as a result of a mediocre fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like a mediocre fuck is punishment enough. <laughs> you don't need a reminder for the rest of your life going, who's my daddy, who's my daddy? And you're like, yeah, funny enough, your daddy was asking mommy a very similar question the night you were conceived. <laughs> He wanted to be my daddy for one night, and now he's your daddy forever. <laughs> we don't need a reminder. We don't need a reminder of a mediocre fuck. Imagine your, your boyfriend comes and says, hey, I've organized a romantic weekend for the two of us. And you get all excited, and then he takes you to Brussels. <laughs> Not with the idea of taking you to Bruges after. No, just Brussels, you know, and you spend the day doing a guided tour of the U European Parliament. You know? <laughs> Do you want a souvenir of the European Parliament? No. Nobody wants a souvenir from a shitty holiday. Same with the media, okay? And I was in this unfortunate situation, guys. Like, I went to Brussels. <laughs> I also had an abortion. Not at the same time. That would have been a disaster, no. Uh, <laughs> I was 23 years old. I was still living in Argentina. And yeah, I know, I was no kid, okay? But these things can happen at any point in your life because none of the available contraception methods are 100% effective. None of them. So I was using none. <laughs> I had the, the pregnancy test in my boyfriend's house, I went to the bathroom, I locked myself in, I peed on the stick, and I left it in a corner, I just left the room, kind of, you know, so that you can think carefully what you're going to say to me, you know. <laughs> and then after a few minutes, my boyfriend goes and gets it, and he comes back from the bathroom like completely white as if he had seen a ghost, you know, like, or two ghosts, like the, the twins from The Shining, you know, like, you want to be daddy? And he shows me the stick and he says, it's positive, what are we going to do? And I'm like, I don't know, put it in the bin, you know, we can't reuse it now. And like, I knew back then that I didn't, I didn't want to have kids, because one of the reasons is kids are expensive. Very expensive. Mm. Like, if you don't believe me, ask my parents how expensive my abortion was. <laughs> it's super expensive. <laughs> so uh, um, I contacted uh, this uh, retired gynecologist lady who was willing to do the procedure, and uh, I had to ask her, like, why, why are you taking this risk? Like, you could go to jail. And she said, look, honey, um, I had to be a mother against my will and it ruined my life completely. And she looks at the nurse standing next to her and she says, she knows she's my daughter. <laughs> I'm gonna finish now, but I wanted to tell you like one time, I, uh, I, I finished this set and after uh, a man came over to me and, and he said, I think, I think your tone comes across as flippant and cavalier. Because, yeah, because you can't forget that you're talking about killing living organisms. And I said, sir, you're completely right. You know, like unsafe abortions do kill living organisms. They're called women <laughs> or menstruating persons, right? But the real question here is, uh, what do flippant and cavalier mean? <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>